Welcome in to Staley High School for the Boys District Championships in Basketball and a matchup of two rivals featuring lots of friends and neighbors, if you will. Joel Goldberg alongside of Schaefer shoots, and for the third time this year, the Park Hill South Panthers will take on the Park Hill Trojans. And Schaefer, as a Park Hill South kid yourself, and someone that knows everybody that is on this floor. What does this mean to both schools and both sets of teams? You know, it's the talk of the town, really. You mentioned the schools. It's a big thing to the schools. It's a big thing to the community as well. The team that wins this game is going to have bragging rights. They have played twice already. Both been two very competitive games. We saw just before this one, North Kansas City and Staley. Those teams have played twice. Staley's won both. North Kansas City's ended up on top of that one. We'll see what happens here this afternoon. On paper, and I'd say on paper, Park Hill South would be the favorite. They do have more talent, but whether it's the good old cliche, throw the records out, which never really makes sense, but it seems to happen in a lot of cases in sports, or whether it's just contrasting styles, these are two teams that have battled real close this year. Both times South did win, but they were very close games. How come they were close? You know, Park Hill really showed up shooting. We see they have multiple outside shooters. We saw it yesterday against Oak Park, a team they were supposed to beat by a pretty dramatic margin. That didn't happen. That game went into double overtime. But Park Hill did a very good job shooting the ball against Park Hill South in that last game. Park Hill South didn't get as much done offensively as they have in the past. And Park Hill's going to have to continue that great defense and the sharp shooting if they want to stay in this one today. Well, we talked about the contrasting styles, and we'll give you the lineups in a moment, but for South, it is a matter of size. For Park Hill, the Trojans, it is a matter of speed and shooting. But really, there, there's a lot of talent, obviously, on both of these, of, of these squads, but they really do it different ways, don't they? Absolutely. You know, and you bring up a good point with Park Hill kind of being more known for their speed and their shooting, but they're not small by any means. You can see them all out there right now. Shambit's getting ready to jump. He'll run the point every once in a while for them. They're not small by any means. Park Hill South is bigger with that being said, and they usually use that to their advantage. They are bigger, and they do have a lot of talent, but as Rick Zeke pointed out, the coach of South, the best player on the floor, in his opinion, is Landry Shambit, number 20, and we'll tell you more about him in just a moment and some of the looks and offers that he has at the college level. Park Hill is in the red. They actually turned the ball over off the jump there, stepping out of bounds in the white, the top seed here in the district and the seventh ranked team in the area, according to the Kansas City Star, would be Park Hill South. Lineups in just a moment as we are underway here at Staley High School in what figures to be a very entertaining district championship. Peyton Meek. Different starting lineup than the semifinal district game for South. There's Robert Lane, tosses it up and gets fouled. The starting lineup for Park Hill, the Trojans 13 and 13. Same as yesterday when they won in double overtime against Oak Park 71-63. Carter Ankers runs the point. Deontay Wilson, 6'3", junior guard. Landry Shamit is the star, 6'4", junior. Lewis Reinmiller, sharp shooting, 6'4", junior. And Kenny McConnell is the big man down low, 6'4", senior. On the other side, Mitch Henderson again at the point for South. Captain Peyton Meek is a 6'5", senior. Robert Lane, 6'4", senior, saw him with the free throw there. Evan Hines, after missing yesterday's game, serving a suspension, if you'll call it that, for mm -hmm. two technicals in his previous game, is in the starting lineup. And Hudson Welty, the other captain, is out there. And this one should, Schaefer, provide a lot of thrilling moments. Absolutely. You see Park Hill South starting off in a man, something we haven't seen a whole lot of this season. I'm actually pretty surprised they're coming out on this man defense. Landry Shamit's shot is going to hit the back of the rim and roll out of bounds. And so score remains 1-0. Shamit has already had offers so far from Stephen F. Austin and Drake and other schools that are looking at him that have come in to see him. A couple of big names in the area. Wichita State, the undefeated Shockers, and Creighton. That's wow. pretty good. He has the size of a big man. 
And we talked a little bit about this yesterday, the size of a big man at 6'4", 6'5", and the skill set of a guard. And I think that David Garrison made a great point to that, their head coach, and I mentioned, couldn't you really play him anywhere? And he said, I would love to clone him and have five of them. <laughs> Big board by Robert Laney, battles, misses it, tries to get his own rebound, which he often does, but the Trojans were able to corral it, then throw it out of bounds, and it will go back the direction of the home team on the scoreboard, Park Hill South. We saw Robert Lane play a great game yesterday as well as Alan Hyatt stepping in for Evan Hines. I know he's not in the game right now, but I would expect to see him come in quite a bit, especially after the performance he had last night. There's Lane, and we're going to see some high-low in this one, and there's the dump down low, and the Trojans were lobbying for that to be their ball, and actually maybe they... No, they don't get it. Okay. The initial call was... Park Hill South, and that's what it will remain. Hines from outside misses, or pulled down by Deontay Wilson. Trojans Park Hill South. wearing the red today. Sorry, go on. Park Hill South big men aren't afraid to step out and, and shoot some of those outside shots. Peyton Meek, um, definitely, uh, we know him. Hudson Welty, a post, he plays a lot underneath. He'll step out quite a bit as well. You just saw Evan Hines take a pretty deep outside shot. He's actually hit a few threes this season for a while had one of the better efficiency. I know he only took probably four or five three-pointers and made a couple, but for a while at the top three-point efficiency on the team. Still waiting for our first field goal in this game as both squads maybe feeling things out a little bit. And there's the strip by Kenny McConnell. Ball will remain down on this end. They faced each other twice this year and South won it 58-50 on January 28th, 61-58. On February 14th, there is Peyton Meek, and that is a three for the sharpshooter. His 150th career three at Park Hill South. And he does, that's the best in Park Hill South history. He leads any player ever to come through here in threes, and he's and he's still shooting, as you can tell. Hopefully, make that sure that record doesn't get broken anytime soon. Beautiful pass by Carter Anchors, who looked like he had the basket, saw the defense coming, and dropped it over to McConnell for a deuce. Ball is stripped now by Wilson. Wilson pushed, being harassed by Hines. Into the lane to the left side, and missing is Lewis Ryan Miller, but he ends up back with it. Kicks outside. Wilson ponders and thinks otherwise. McConnell saw him hit a three yesterday. Doesn't take a lot of them, but he is capable. There's Shamit, silky smooth, just makes it look so easy as he glides in for two. We see Park Hill South staying in this man. It might have something to do with how the Trojans shot the ball the last time these, these two teams met. Maybe they're trying to make sure they, they earn their points and not get easy shots from behind the arc. Well, Garrison said they have really prepared for that 3-2 zone because he said it feels like with those long arms and athleticism, that those arms cover sideline to sideline. Hines kicks over and will have a block called on Ryan Miller. Four four about midway through the first quarter, and that foul was called on Ryan Miller, his first of the game. There's the baseline shot, a little too strong from Hudson Welty. Hudson usually is a pretty good out shooter, outside shooter, excuse me. We've seen that through his freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons. This year he's struggling a little bit from the outside, not as effective as he usually is. Well, McConnell throws up the air ball on that one. And another big man out there looking to shoot. That is Welty, as you mentioned, and Gets the rim on that, so we stay at 4-4. Carter Anchors tries to throw up a prayer, can't get it. And a nice job battling for the rebound is Huston Walty. I'm not sure that we will be telling as many stories regarding movies or <laughs> Royals baseball or fashion statements as we did in Park Hill South's blowout yesterday. This one should be close throughout. Mitch Henderson 
And they swing it around. Down low to Lane on the left block, and he's going to get called for steps. Defense provided by Kenny McConnell. That's something Robert isn't entirely used to. He's, he's used to going up a lot of these real tall, skinny guys. McConnell able to match his width a little bit as we see him trying to, trying to be strong, trying to muscle his way around in there. He gets called for the travel. We'll have a timeout. Jake Lee just checked into the game, and it looked like maybe Aspen Henry, too. We'll check on that when we resume. But, you know, there's something about these teams, and you talk about being in the same neighborhood and growing up in bragging rights. There aren't really a whole lot of secrets, right, when you've all gone to sixth grade together. I mean, whether they played together or against each other in the summers, along with the two games per year at the high school level, there aren't too many secrets, are there? No, there is. And a common misconception is a lot of times people think, oh, Crosstown rival, these kids must hate each other. Well, a lot of these kids grow up playing on the same youth basketball, youth football teams. They're friends. They know each other well. Do they want to win? Absolutely. But a lot of these players know a lot about each other, as you mentioned earlier, and like each other, really. At the same time, I don't know if that makes it better or worse if you're the team that loses mm -hmm. than when it's against someone you hate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know you hate to lose against someone you hate, right. but what about when it's your buddy? A lot of respect on the floor between these teams and these coaches, and I think that's the way that anyone that appreciates competitive sports, especially at the high school level, would like it. Just over two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and nothing but net from Lewis Reinmiller as he hits the three. First tray of the game for him. And now we're going to have a jump ball and a tie-up call. I you saw the jump ball was called, but you get a little sneak peek at the strength of Robert Lane, just throwing guys off of him, still going up strong. The jump ball was called before he got that shot up. And I think that's what happens when you've got a big guy with that kind of strength who can throw some bodies around a little bit just with his strength and, mm -hmm. and going for the ball, you're going to see the other team's fans and, and maybe the coaching staff, the players, calling for that foul, thinking that, that they were wrong there. But Robert Lane is such a strong individual. Peyton Meek a little strong on that shot. Ryan Miller does a really nice job, not just three-point shooting, but pulling down rebounds for this squad, among other duties. Both teams, Schaefer, just seem to be so patient with looking for the right shot. In that case, Landry Shamit liked what he saw, buries it. It's 9-4. I ever see him stepping out to the outside a little bit. People forget about how good of an all-around player he is. He's an outside shooter. He's an aggressive player, able to get to the basket. Offensively, he can score about from anywhere on the floor. Well, Shamit already has five points here in this first quarter. I'll make that four points. And here's Peyton Meek. Swings down to Hudson Welty. Welty. And we're going to have, it looks like a offensive foul called away from the ball on Peyton Meek. Hmm. Didn't see it, but I can't for sure tell you that I was looking at Peyton either. So I, I can't defend his, I'm sure, what he would believe is his innocence. But I was looking down at the <laughs> ball on that. Ooh, great defense there. Stepping in for the denial as Hudson Welty gives it up, and then we'll have a foul on the floor as Mitch Henderson was hit. Great job defensively for the Panthers. Saw Allen Hyatt step in between that one. Got a hand on it, got it on the floor quickly. And Henderson got fouled. I thought he was going up for the shot. It looks like they called that one on the floor. Nine to four, 112 to go in the first quarter. As a mishap there, and heading the other way is Carter Anchors, takes it up and then is blocked twice with the final piece of that off the hand of Hudson Welty, and then will end up staying down there and Park Hill ball. Love the effort, and there's the sportsmanship as Carter Anchors Helps up Evan Hines. Student section <laughs> trying to <laughs> hex. It looks like the South students trying to hex Deontay Wilson. That's that's the best way I could say it when they've got like the, the fingers going at him. 
Not the finger, the fingers. <laughs> Let's make that clear. I think all in good sportsmanship, too. I, I'm not hearing anything nasty or anything like that. I, I think both of these sets of students are just, just, just having fun. 35 seconds left in the first quarter. Trojans looking to extend their offense. The three-point shot no good. Deontay Wilson tries to go for the rebound and will be called for the foul. Panthers still in that man defense. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to play in that. It, they are down by five right now. Park Hill doing a pretty good job offensively. Um, but I'll be interested to see if they go into that zone and try to use their length a little better, continue to stay in this man. And South really just hasn't, and it obviously shows on the scoreboard with just four points, that they haven't been able to find any kind of rhythm offensively yet. You know, the shots that they usually hit haven't, haven't all been fallen here early. That has that does happen to them quite a bit. Sometimes early in games, they don't they don't get started. It takes them a quarter to wake up a little bit. Into the corner, Hudson Welty, and he gets that. Just what South was looking for. Makes it 9-7, final seconds. Shamit looking to get one up. Don't think he got it on time. He did not. The crowd will like that. And he's got incredible control and grace in what he does, but you can hear the buzzer clearly going off before he threw that up. I hate to say threw it up. He knew exactly what he was doing as far as the great shooting touch just a little bit late on it. So after a quarter, as advertised, extremely competitive in the district championship, Park Hill leading Park Hill South 9-7. Just like your hometown team, City Rent a Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169, City Rent a Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrentatruck.com. Welcome back to Staley High School. Joel Goldberg alongside of Schaefer Schutz here on 810 WHB TV 9 7 as we are set to start the second quarter. And no major scores yet. Landry Shamit leading the way with four for Park Hill. And a couple of threes from Peyton Meek and Hudson Welty are the field goals for Park Hill South. Panthers have gone into that zone we were talking about a little bit earlier. This does appear to be a 2-3 zone, however. From outside, just rolling in and out for Deontay Wilson. Welty drives to his left, and they're going to call steps on the play. Wasn't sure if it was or not. Yeah, I don't know about that one. He made it look pretty smooth if it was. Mm -hmm. Ricky Trammell is into the game along with Drew Hendricks. A couple of the top reserves for David Garrison. And a couple of senior guards at that. And the three from Ricky Trammell. Makes it 12 to 7. Park Hill really, any player on the floor can shoot the ball from behind the arc. We've seen McConnell take a few outside shots. There we see Meek driving and hitting that one. But Park Hill really, they don't lose a whole lot coming around the board wanting to shoot from the outside. Trammell a great shooter. Wilson, Shamit, and Hendricks is known for his three-point shot. Five points early on here now for Peyton Meek. Rick Zeke saying that the Trojans shoot as well as anyone in the city. A bad break there for Evan Hines as he's trying to pull in that loose ball. It was getting harassed by Deontay Wilson and then ended up losing it out of bounds. And so it will be Trojan ball.
I think when you talk about being one of the best shooting teams or can shoot as well as anyone in the city, it's just it's the amount of guys they have. It's not just mm -hmm. one or two. Well, there is that 2-3 zone that you were mentioning, Schaefer, and see how the Trojans adjust to it. It will be interesting. Park Hill, we've talked about a little bit how good of shooters they are. I would expect to see them try to shoot over this zone as compared to slashing through it. There, Hendricks takes a three. Well, he got the look he wanted, just a little bit strong with it, and Hines pulls it down. There is Hines, and that beautiful entry pass from Jacob Kaltefleiter. First time we've called his name <laughs> and did so successfully. Jacob doing a great job of stepping in this year. He got his number called after the injury of Ryan Welty. Great outside shooter. There we saw him passing the ball inside. And we're seeing patience going up now against the zone. Deontay Wilson running the baseline. Nice skip pass from Shamit. And the drop to McConnell. Can't get it to fall. That's a shot they need to make because they were able to to penetrate that zone, dish it off and get the open look, but could not get the bucket on it. Now a foul is called. This one will be the first of the game on Landry Shaman. Hendricks did a great, great job there getting, getting baseline, got a great pass to McConnell. They're going to have to finish open looks like that if they hope to stay in the lead. They're only up by one right now. Park Hill South starting to make a little bit of a comeback here with five minutes left in the second quarter. Look at the two bigs up at the free throw line for South. Here's Henderson, and now Meek. Hines looking to run a little high-low, gets it after the deflection to Lane. Lane barrels his way in for the bucket. The strength of Robert Lane is, is really something to watch. It's very impressive. And I tell you what, some of those elbows can do some damage. I know from, from some experience. That, right? Although he's never been pursuing you when you're a quarterback, fortunately, well, in practice. He's got a couple shots in practice that I wasn't too happy with. but He does have to at least help you up afterwards, yeah. right? Depends on what kind of mood he's in. <laughs> well, you better say nice things. <laughs> well, at this point, right, he, he's gone next year, so you're all right. Yeah, I'm in the clear now. There's Lane heading to UCM to play football next year. Hines with the rebound. Great touch over to Welty. And... They give Hines a lot of credit on that one for getting the board and then quickly and unselfishly distributing it. Absolutely. He leads the team in points. Also a great passer. Not a, not a lot of people know that about him. He's a great passer. They know about his rebound and blocking ability as well. Another one of those complete players. Well, Hudson with five points now on the game. Whether it's balls and strikes, fouls or flags, your referees and game officials are a vital part of high school athletics. If you've ever tried your hand at officiating, you know how hard these men and women work, and you certainly know they would never miss a call intentionally. Keep these things in mind as you attend sporting events. After all, respecting officials and authority figures is one of the most valuable lessons that we can teach our students. This message has been brought to you by your friends at Park Hill and Park Hill South and the Missouri State High School Activities Association. 15 to 12 as we are... Getting a signal from the officials that that was just a 20-second timeout. So let's get back out to the court is what they're saying. And now the Trojans get that message too. Well, there's that 2-3 zone, and that's changed things up a little bit. Sham it. It's going to float it up there. You know, everything he does just looks good, even though that one didn't make it to the net. And then Deontay Wilson, great presence from Hines. And you see the defense ramping it up a little bit for Park Hill, or for Park Hill South. Three minutes to go before halftime as the Trojans 
trailing by three. That's the biggest south lead of the game, and they will remain patient, get the ball down to McConnell, who does a really nice job trying to navigate the physical presence of Lane. Yeah, definitely a great job there by McConnell, kind of countering countering Lane's strength a little bit. We saw him go up, great shot there, able to power through Lane's strength and got it to fall. And McConnell almost with the steal there. Henderson ends up with the wide open three and he does justice by that, drilling it in an 18-14 lead. You know, he doesn't shoot a whole lot, especially from behind the, behind the arc, unless he's open. He's a very efficient three-point shooter because of that. And there we see him hit one. Now you can see they're wanting to get the ball into the lane to McConnell, but he had it poked away. Peyton Meek off the rim in the backboard. We're going to have a foul called on lane battling for the rebound. I guess that's one of the problems when you're that big guy down low and you have that massive size advantage, at least as far as physicality goes, the refs will have their eye on you. You know, he definitely does have the magnifying glass on him a lot, as well as Hines. Hines, unfortunately, kind of has developed a reputation. We heard about his double technical against Truman. Guys like that have the, the microscope a lot pointed right towards them. They have to be careful in situations like this. Second foul of the game on Lane, so we'll keep an eye on that. Certainly not a point where they've got to worry yet, but Alan Hyatt is coming to check in, and it would seem like he is probably coming in for Lane. Going to have a foul called there. I, I can't say I disagree with that call. Shamit got tripped up. But it wasn't until he walked laying on the floor that they called the foul. So mm -hmm. it was almost as if they weren't going to call the foul until they realized that it was the reason for the travel, if that right. makes sense. That can't happen if you're Park Hill South. A wide open Shamit on the entry pass. Too easy, but a nice job by the Trojans. Six points now by Shamit to lead all scorers, and they trail by two. That was a great, great play there by Shaman. Didn't appear like that was the set play. He just found an opening cut real fast. They able to get an easy two. Hudson Welty misses, and as expected, Alan Hyatt did check in for Robert Lane. Hyatt played some big moments or big minutes yesterday with Hines sitting after the double technical. Three-point shot, a little too strong for Drew Hendricks. One minute to go in the half, and as expected, very tight between these two rivals. Mitch Henderson does a real nice job handling the ball. There's the entry pass and an easy bucket. Nice look from Allen Hyatt as he dumps it in to Evan Hines just the way they drew it up. Great job out of both those guys. Evan Hines really had a breakout game here at Staley. The first time Park Hill South played Staley, we saw him come out. He had about 20 points, a couple dunks. And I know he loves playing in this gym. 21-5 Park Hill South, 13-13 Park Hill. But their two games this year have been decided by a total of nine points. And right now it is a four-point differential as we get down to 10 seconds left. Trojans holding for that last shot. Got to think it'll end up back in the hands of this man. It does, but he's being double teamed. Shamit, what's he going to do with it? Probably not enough time, and no, stripped. Thrown up, no shot. But they were not able to execute. Shamit's going to mention a couple of words to his teammates about maybe what they could have done right. And you could see, at least as we're looking at him, that it's not, he's not yelling at anybody, but just talking it over. So that did not go the way they wanted, but the half lived up to expectations. 20 to 16, very, very competitive. You know, a, a great job at the end of that half to the Park Hill South defense, able to get two guys on Shaman. It appeared he was going to try to take that last shot. Made him make a tough decision. He tried to pass it over the top. Hudson Welty got the steal. Well, we have at least 16 minutes of basketball left, maybe more. It could be that type of game as these teams battle to move on in the postseason to Independence next week. We've got the second half of basketball coming up after this break on 810 WHB TV.
congratulations to all the basketball teams going to district. Rock on. Congratulations! 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 Congratulations to all the basketball teams who are going to districts. Congratulations. No, now it's a banana. Ulcerous Fire or Water Damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service. We're here for you. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810 WHB TV at PVSKC.com. PVSKC.com. Cafe Italia is Kansas City's premier Italian restaurant, open for dinner seven days a week and located in scenic downtown Parkville. Cafe Italia offers homemade pasta, fresh baked bread, and cooked to order Italian dishes. We offer a full complement of salads, pasta dishes, chicken, meat, and seafood entrees as well. With entrees starting at $9.95 that include salad and bread, two people can enjoy an elegant dinner out for less than $25. Make reservations online from our website or our Facebook page. We also have a full line catering service and banquet facility to accommodate groups from 15 to 300. Make sure to like us on Facebook or Twitter and sign up for emails to receive all our specials and discounts. 
Just like your hometown team, City Run and Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169, City Run and Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrunatruck.com. All service, fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service, we're here for you. Congratulations to all the basketball teams going to district. Rock on. Congratulations! 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 Congrats! Congratulations to all the basketball teams who are going to districts. Congratulations! No, not with a banana. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings Team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. High school, Joel Goldberg, Schaefer shoots the Park Hill Trojans are on the floor. Park Hill South. Panthers have just come back out to start warming up as we're just under two minutes until the start of the second half. So Schaefer, you know the kids, you know the teams very well. What is your assessment? Let's first start off with what you saw from the Park Hill Trojans. You know, Park Hill came out, they shot the ball pretty well early on. We saw Shamit doing a pretty good job from the outside as well from the, as well as from the inside. He does a great job driving to the basket. If he doesn't find something open, he does a good job dishing it out. Um, they played pretty good defense as well, holding Park Hill South. We saw for a while in that first quarter it was 9-4. to four. I think Park Hill South only had four points in the entire fourth first quarter. I'm looking. There they go. They finally got it. <laughs> they, they, had, they had a basketball and warm-ups that was, you know, wedged in between mm -hmm. the backboard and the rim. And it's almost like the bigs weren't paying attention or just wanted the guards to give it a try. <laughs> and after uh, about three running jumps, and I didn't see who it was, uh, the guy right in front of Lane right there, uh -huh. um, probably one of the smallest kids on the team. That's Fortuna. We saw him oh, play, that's Fortuna. We saw play him last a night. Yeah. Yep. He's not getting up to the rim, though, right? <laughs> he, still, he still has a little bit of weight. He's got a little bit of growing to do. Well, I did yep. enjoy watching Easton Fortuna play last night. He did a good job. But... That was entertaining. All right, so how about for Park Hill South? You know, we saw them do something that we don't see a whole lot. They came out in a man. Um, I think that might have something to do with the way Park Hill was shooting the ball, not only early here, but the last time these two teams met. Maybe trying to get a hand in some of those shooters' faces. And, and something about Park Hill is anybody can shoot the ball from the outside. they got multiple outside shooters. And you know Coach Garrison trusts pretty much any of those guys to shoot. We've seen McConnell step back a little bit. The big guys shoot a bit. Um, any of those guys really can. I think that has a lot to do with why Coach Zeke wanted to start off in that man defense. We did see them move back to the zone. They started to, uh, that actually did appear to help him a little bit. Park Hill went cold in the second quarter. Park Hill South got things going offensively and now have 
now have the lead. Well, half of the Park Hill South points have been scored by their captains, leading scorers Peyton Meek and Hudson Welty, each with five. Landry Shamit for Park Hill leads all with six on the board in this low scoring affair. And you see some immediate and aggressive pressure from the Trojans. We also get a chance to look at the big man setting a pick lane and then on the other block the other big man or one of the many big men that was Evan Hines with a nice touch. A little sneak peek of his athletic ability. Some people don't realize how athletic he really is. Well, said both captains were leading the way with five points. He now has six to lead his team and pulls down that rebound. Biggest lead of the game for the Panthers, 22-16. Henderson being guarded by Anchors. Anchors a defensive guard. He's made himself known as a defensive player. Doesn't do as much on the offensive side, but still contributes a lot. Defense is more his specialty, however. There's the high-low game down low, and then going to be knocked out of bounds by, look like Lewis Reinmiller. Haven't really called Ryan Miller's name very much. He can get hot in a hurry, but just has the one three-pointer. Speaking of threes, Peyton Meek can't get the friendly roll on that one, and here comes Wilson to push. And now against that 2-3 zone, they have not been able to score much against it ever since they switched Park Hill South from the man to the zone, as you pointed out. And you mentioned before the game started, Coach Garrison worried about the 3-2 zone and the, them preparing for the 3-2 zone. We see Coach Zeke and the Panthers mixing it up just a little bit in this 2-3. They get it to Shamit, and that would have been a three-point play if it fell. Nice job of rotating that around, and, and really, you would think that, that almost any touch that Shamit is able to get, especially with the way he stays under control, is going to be a good look. That was the case there and ends up drawing the foul. Yeah, you know, Park Hill did a good job of moving that ball around uh, before they just took a shot. That's how you have to beat a zone. You have to move the ball around, maybe try to find something inside. Shaman took that one from the outside. Didn't hit it, but he got fouled. First free throw. The second one there is good, and so now 22-18 as Shamit is at eight points on the game. Pesky defense there as Peyton Meek was trapped in the corner and they're going to call a push on the play foul on Shamit his second Henderson will set things up again being guarded by anchors Lane that ball deflected out of bounds and after some discussion from the officials, and I think they got that one right. They ruled that it was off of Ryan Miller, but it was close enough and enough hands in on the play that it provided some debate. Anchors presses. Nice battle of point guards there. Here's Hines, body control, bucket in the foul. Great job there out of Hines. You saw him adjust his body in the air. You don't see that out of guys with his length very often. A lot of times you see those big guys being a little uncoordinated. Not the case with Hines. It almost seemed to Schaefer that his, he had the body going one way, the hands and the ball going the other way, but in the end it all kind of came together and, and, and went the right direction. But incredible that he was able to keep that under control, completes the three-point play, and he is now at nine points on the game. Biggest lead of the contest for the Panthers at seven. Anchors doesn't shoot a lot, but found himself open, and it rolls out, pulled down by Welty. Lane at the free throw line, spins down low and kicked out nicely by Hines. Back out to Lane. 
Drives to his right, and we're going to have a foul called. Actually, looks like, is that an offensive foul on Lane? Yeah, I don't know about that one. I think I would have called that one the other way. Rick Zeke furious on it. As he should be. You know, I, I believe that was Anchors had his hands all over Robert. And we mentioned earlier Robert kind of having the microscope on him for, for how big and physical he is. That might have had something to do with it. I would have been fine if they just let it go. There's some hand checking there. Nice follow by Shamit off of the miss. And there were two rebounders there. And if Shamit can get his hands on it, you know what is going to happen. And so keeps his team in the contest at 25-20. And now a steal, but Hines able to get it back. And then a near football collision for Ryan Miller with Lane. That might not have gone very well. So good for him that there wasn't full contact. Ryan Miller for three, misses, and then Finally pulled down there by Peyton Meek. A collision of about three players. Ball bounced off of Hines' head, actually. Now Hines misses that one. Back down to the other end. And the jam by Deontay Wilson. And so Rick Zeke will get a quick timeout. A lot of ping pong back and forth there with loose balls and a couple of turnovers. And after the scrum of it all is over, it's a three-point contest. Well, the Panthers did have a five on three coming down this side of the floor. Hines took a quick shot, missed it. Park Hill got the rebound, and luckily had a couple of these guys still back here. Got an easy bucket for Wilson. 25-22 in the third quarter. We'll step aside on 810 WHB-TV. Congratulations to all the basketball teams going to district. Rock on. Congratulations! 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 Congrats! Congratulations! Congratulations to all the basketball teams who are going to districts. Congratulations! No, not with a banana. Good crowd on hand for the district championship between rivals Park Hill and Park Hill South and a three-point contest midway through the third quarter. Joel Goldberg and Schaefer shoots on 810 WHB-TV. And absolutely no surprise to how close this one has been. You know, you mentioned earlier on paper, Park Hill South is the more talented and the better basketball team. They've met twice. Both have been very close games. It looks like we're going to get the same type of game here this afternoon. No surprise. This one would have surprised me if there was any kind of blowout. It really would have. And obviously, if you had to pick a team to blow it out, oh, look at that. Nearly drops, but a good entry pass and near finish from Evan Hines, who has been a force down low after having to sit out last night due to two technical fouls in the game prior to that. Hines a very good free throw shooter here at Park Hill South. He's 60 of 85. Hmm. Something a lot of people don't know about him is, is how good he is from the line. And yes, I say that I jinx him. No, I talked about that a little earlier. That's all you. 64% from the field this year too and 172 rebounds. Four point contest. Under four to go in the third quarter. And got to call something. And that's the right call on that yeah. one with both bodies moving and falling. You're going to get the blocking foul called. Both are doing a nice job trying to get set up. Just it was pretty obvious he didn't get there quite in time. Second foul of the game on Welty. Ricky Trammell over to Shamit. Thinks for a moment about the NBA range three and then a little bit of an attempt at getting it into the lane and an errant pass picked off by South. Robert Lane doing a great job using his body, getting in there, 
stepping in the passing lane, getting a hand on that one, and now Panthers have control of the ball. There's Lane, and McConnell, it looks like, will be whistled for the violation. And that'll be the second foul of the game on him and the fourth on the Trojans. Evan Hines will get a quick breather, the 6'6 senior. Been playing very important and productive minutes in this contest. Henderson into Welty. Welty thinking baseline, lays it up with the left hand and nice touch. Great shot there from the big lefty, Hudson Welty, the captain of this Park Hill South team. He's, he's been a huge part of the success for the team this year, always making sure the guys are, are getting in there, in the weight room especially. He's a huge advocate for the weight room. And you know, it really shows on him after his sophomore year, hit the weight room, put on 15, 20 pounds just of muscle, and you can definitely tell a difference in his play. Seven points on the game, and now 940 on his career. Shamit stripped by Wealthy, real nice defense there. And with about two minutes to play in the third, Panthers look to extend their lead. Lane, he's gonna get called for a charge. I'll agree with that one. I'm not sure about the last one before. And look, the charge, that could, could always be debated, but that mm -hmm. big body, and when the body goes flying, like the other body yeah. goes flying like that, it, it's just gonna be very noticeable. And so that will present some challenges now because correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's the fourth foul on Lane. Third, okay. A good call by Coach Zeke pulling him out anyway. They're going to need him down the stretch. And, you know, I would I would agree with that call as well. He spun around pretty quickly, had those elbows out. I think that was the right call in that situation. Well, Hines was coming back into the game anyway, so he's back in there, and maybe they sit lane at least for the rest of this quarter. They're still in good shape as far as that goes. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound attempt. And then we're going to have a foul, though, called like against Park Hill as they were going for the rebound. Or did he step out of bounds? I think he stepped out of bounds okay. is what the referee saw down there. Meek will take it up with a minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Park Hill South has gone into their stall. We'll see them do this a lot, you know, with, with, with a lot of time left. And actually, they just set that offense back up. Well, trying to play some head games with, with Coach Garrison and the Park Hill Trojans. There's Hines. Swing it back out to Henderson. There's that patience again. They find the big man down low who quickly draws the foul. Jake Lee with the infraction, and that patience pays off as, yeah, maybe stalling, but then suddenly they see the big man open down low on the post without a whole lot of players that can guard him. You know, I really like that call from Coach Zeke as well. We see them a lot of times with a minute 30, sometimes even two minutes left in a quarter or a half, go into that stall, try to run that clock down, and they work a lot of times to get that last shot. I like Coach Zeke starting off in the stall, maybe trying to lull those Trojans to sleep a little bit, and then getting right into their offense. Another good free throw. 12 points. And the leading scorer, Evan Hines. 30 to 22, final minute of what has been a very close game. This is the largest lead so far. And swing it over to Lee and now to Shamit for three off of the front of the rim, pulled down by Welty. Really needed that three, did Park Hill South. Would have put it back down to five, but now a chance for double digit on the scoreboard, double digit deficit. And then again, the patience. Wealthy nearly stolen by Carter Anchors. And that's that's one of the problems South has had a lot when they go into this stall, and that's why they don't do it as much as, as Coach Zeke would like to. They have a tough time turning that ball over, especially, you know, playing against these guys so much, Park Hill knows that stall pretty well. They know when guys are going to pop up the top and call for the ball and there we saw Hudson 
Throwing it to a covered. I believe he's trying to get it to Henderson. Now final 10, eight seconds. Called the flighter into the game. And Hines with the rare turnover as he was trying to play a little high low and dump it down low to Allen Hyatt. Coach Zeke and appeared Peyton Meek as well were wanting a, a tip call. They thought a Trojan tipped that ball. They're not going to get it. All right, final shot. It is up and no good. Ricky Trammell trying to get that one going. They, I'm sure, would have loved to have had Shamit take that last shot, but Peyton Meek was never going to let him get the ball on the inbounds pass. And so one quarter left to be played to determine the district champion 30 to 22 Park Hill South on top of Park Hill at Staley High School. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810WHB-TV at pvskc.com. pvskc.com. Just like your hometown team. We are back at Staley High School for the fourth quarter and likely conclusion although you never know we could have overtime in this one Joel Goldberg Schaefer shoots and Park Hill will start off with the ball it is that time of year March Madness quickly approaching and really I'd call this all part of the March Madness Kansas lost today, so that'll maybe surprise some people. 92 to 86. Wow. At West Virginia, which I think was a bit of a homecoming for Andrew Wiggins, who scored 41. Mm. In what very well may be his first and only year at KU. Long three point shot for Shamit, no good. Corralled by Hines on the rebound. You know, we see Park Hill South staying true to that zone. They started off in a man, went into that 2-3 in the second quarter. We've seen them stay in that the rest of the game. Henderson over for a wide open look from Jacob Kaltaflieder. He misses, and here come the Trojans. You know, that is the look you want to get. Kaltaflieder, very good shooter here at Park Hill South. Just couldn't get that one to fall. Park Hill has not been the same since they switched to that zone. Haven't been able to hit the shots, and again, you see it. Ryan Miller does get the rebound, deflected out of bounds by Hines, but they, they have not been able to get into any kind of offensive rhythm, and really the only time they were was against that man-to-man. -man. Yeah, you know, I me personally, I think Coach Zeke as well kind of thought the opposite, that they'd be able to shoot out of that zone, and, and Park Hill South would have a better chance in that man. And it appeared, you know, after that first quarter, Park Hill came out hot. Coach Zeke changed it up, and the, and the change has worked. Well, there's the three, and it's been a while. But Lewis Reinmiller, who is capable of hitting a number of those, ends up with his second tray of the contest, and now we're back down to five points. Robert Lane is back in the game with those three fouls. Six and a half minutes to go. Trying to play a little high-low, battling down low with Jake Lee. Meek drives into the lane and kicks it out. They reset again. Meek pulls up for the jumper, gets it. You know, everybody talks about how good of a three-point shooter he is. Another thing he has in his shooting arsenal is that, that mid-range jumper. He does a great job, especially off of a dribble, getting his feet set and able to put up a good shot like he did right there. I'm trying to... Figure out this zone as Shamit battles right around the free throw line. First with Meek, 
now with Lane. But they're not able to get him the ball. They are able to get an open look. And the three-point shot by Ricky Trammell. Cuts it to four, and now we are, for the first time in quite a while, seeing that sharp shooting, what Park Hill is known for. Great high, low. Oh, look at the kick out. We're gonna see the shot. I almost thought there was gonna be a foul called down low, but see some of the slick passing from Hines. There's Shamit out to another wide open shooter in Hendricks. Couldn't get it to fall. That might have sent the house down, at least from the Park Hill side. The intensity level and the pace has picked up ever since Park Hill was able to climb back into this one. They were really never only more than a basket or two from getting back in. It wasn't a blowout, but the momentum had gone the other way. Absolutely. You know, on, these, on those last two possessions, both teams able to get an open shot, an open three from the corner. And neither of those shooters were able to hit Hudson Welty on, on the near side and uh, Hendricks on the far side. Henderson, Welty, now down to Hines. Hines trying to get that over to the other big down there, Lane, and it was deflected out of bounds. 4.36 to go. And we're gonna dry off the floor there before we get things going again. And I'm not sure if Peyton Meek, wondering if he's got any blood. That's what I'm guessing there. Because they've pulled him out of the game. And now he jumps right back in. No, he's got to, does he have to sit <laughs> after the? Yeah, I think, I think they're going to have to take a look at him. But I think he might even by rule need to sit. See, because now he's going to go to check back in after the next yeah. stoppage. I think we just had a little bit of blood on the nose is, is at least what I'm guessing from up here. Trainer attended to him easily and quickly and easily. Oh, runner does not fall and here comes Shamit. Shamit looking to drive, kicks out to the side. But Hendricks wasn't able to get a good look and so they go back up top. From NBA range, Ryan Miller for three. Heating up now, and we have a one-point game. No surprise whatsoever based on the history of these teams. And now, 32-31, just the kind of drama that we suspected would happen. And Coach Zeke calls a timeout for the Panthers. Big shot at a big time there for Ryan Miller, and Coach Zeke made the right decision. Cutting off this Park Hill momentum. Hopefully out of this timeout, Park Hill South can get something going. Ryan Miller with his third three of the game. And so we've got this great action. And then, you know, I was mentioning that that Kansas lost today to West Virginia. Iowa State beat Oklahoma State. That's, wow. that's a really enticing matchup. And that was a close game. Big 12 tournament coming to Sprint Center next week. And 810 WHB TV is going to be out there for all the pep rallies at the Power and Light District. Um, Thursday and Friday. Saturday too or no, Jim? Maybe, Thursday and Friday. I can only speak for myself. I'll be out there for those, because I'm going to Arizona on Saturday, so. That that depends on if Park Hill is playing Saturday. Ah, okay. So there's, there, there's a lot on the line there. <laughs> that would have to do with a basketball game on Wednesday in Independence. And I'm doing that one. Trying to make me work just so I can get used to what it's like to work again as baseball season starts. All right, let's talk basketball. That's the pressing matter. Park Hill crowd wanted some steps there. They don't get it. Meek, the shot misses, pulled down by Ryan Miller. You know, I really am surprised that didn't get called either. I thought for sure they were going to get Hines on the walk there. 
Didn't call it, but Park Hill ends up with the possession anyway. He's so athletic, too, though. He makes everything look good. It's not awkward, you know, those awkward stuff. Wow, there's another three. Wow. And now this time, Ricky Trammell. Trammell and Ryan Miller have been providing the threes, and it is a 34-32 contest. I won't say I'm surprised at how close it is, but we are at that one point, Schaefer, where it looked like South could pull away in this one, and now suddenly you look at what has happened. You know, this is a, a Park Hill Souths fan, their worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. Last year, St. Joe Central dethroned the, the Panthers at home in a similar situation to this one. South had beat them two games in the regular season, winning most of the games. Central came in, hit a couple big threes late, able to win that game. Mitch Henderson is on the line, misses. Robert Lane battles and able to pull it in. You know, Coach Zeke was saying before the game that in the contest at Park Hill, he said, we were up 16 to 18, and before we knew it, suddenly the thing was down to three points quickly. There's Lane trying to take matters into his own hands, and that'll send him to the line, which is almost always a good thing. You know, something Park Hill South's going to have to do is, is stay calm and realize there's still three minutes left. They are down by two, and I know sometimes they'll panic in some of these situations and try to get it all back as fast as they can. They've got plenty of time this year to play their game and stay patient. A little strong. We don't see that too often. Well, I know you have a rooting stake at hands and <laughs> at hand that I know you know anybody that's watching does too. For me, just having had a chance to talk to both coaches and, and watch both of these teams now for two games, it's just fun to see a very competitive contest. I won't lose sleep or, or whatever it might be over a win or a loss like so many will and that of course is part of the fun of being a fan but i will say as a neutral observer this has been a lot of fun to call deflection there by lane and then hines pulls it down 34 33 the panthers trail but have the ball welty to Hines, spots up, shoots in and out. Got a good look at it, but Shamit with the rebound. Shamit goes all the way to jam. That's big. That's big. That not only puts the Panthers down by three, but I tell you what, that gets that Park Hill team pretty psyched, as you can see right there. The fans, the bench, The Park Hill faithful. Pretty psyched right now. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to help Schaefer understand <laughs> one of the, actually one of the difficult things of being a broadcaster. Because if it happens one day for you, and I think it can if you wanted to, because sincerely, I think you have a lot of broadcasting talent at a very early, early age, but one of the good and bad things of this profession is it will take the rooting interest out of you. Now, this is your own school, and these are your guys. But over time, you will, you will find that you're just calling a good basketball game. But if people at home could have just seen the look on Schaefer's face, <laughs> it was a look of a little bit of, wow, what a dunk, and mostly, oh. It was yeah, tough. You know, I'd say to that's watch. pretty accurate. It was a very impressive dunk. But definitely, as a Park Hill South fan and student, sure, the exact opposite of what you'd like to see. And don't stop rooting, by the way. You're, you're too young to have that taken out of you, the, 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 the beauty and innocence of being a fan. But, I, you know, to me, I was a little surprised that he ended up getting the, the look at that. It wasn't a breakaway, and it, it just seemed like they weren't able to, no one was stepping up to try to stop him. You know, him. we saw Henderson covering a guy underneath, had his back turned to him. Shaman just didn't have anybody in front of him, just brought it all the way down himself and was able to get an easy, easy dunk. Meek throws it up. I thought that might go, and I'll take that shot from him all the time. Bounce pass here, Shaman again, but nice job on the defensive end by Hines. Back into the hands of Shamit. Kicks over to Wilson, who patiently pulls away. Great discipline on both sides, taking care of the basketball. 36-33. Wilson's going to get grabbed. You can see it there. I think that was a foul on Lane as he, he kind of grabbed his jersey as he went by him. I think that is his fourth. 
We haven't seen a foul like that from Robert. Usually it's a mm -hmm. physical foul, and then yep. you can debate whether it was or wasn't. But in that one, it almost looked like he got by him, and he got a little bit lazy in just grabbing the jersey. This is big right here. Miss. Oh. He missed, but they didn't block out Shamit, who gracefully tipped it in in a five-point game. Now a blocking foul called on Ryan Miller, and so that'll be a nice development for the Panthers. They said it was on the floor, but we are in the bonus. You know, still a lot of time left for the Panthers. They got one of their better free throw shooters on the line. It's a chance to cut this one back down to a one possession ball game. Panthers definitely are not out of this one yet. Lefty, Welty, and he hits it. This thing, Schaefer, is far from over. Absolutely, still a lot of time on that clock, a minute 30. I'm not telling you that to make you feel better, I just, <laughs> I feel as though. Well, you know, it does make me feel a little bit better. <laughs> whether, whether you meant to or not. I mean, it, it, I'm happy to help. <laughs> But I, these two teams are just too competitive and too close. We're going to see a lot more developments. There's Shamit, so unselfish. Probably could have taken it to the net. Unselfish and smart, really, too. They're going to have a foul there. It'll just be the fifth team foul on the Panthers. But you know, that, there's so many adjectives that could describe Shamit. And, and in that one, he thought he saw a better shot, but maybe even more importantly with the intelligence and doing what David Garrison wants him to is to not rush anything, allow that ball to get kicked back out. He, he, he excels in every facet. Right, you know, especially in a situation like this where team's up three with only a minute left, get that ball around, try to shave some time off that clock. Wilson, Shamit. Um, I should went Shamit over to Wilson and then saw a streaking Shamit there, but Got a foul on the play. Third foul of the contest on Wealthy, and the next one now will put the Trojans in the bonus. 38-35, a little surprising to have such a low scoring affair. The other two games between these teams, oop, got a collision there. I don't think they're gonna call, nor do I think they should call it intentional. I, that definitely was one heck of a collision. It though. was. I don't think that it was meant to be, though. Right. You know, I, I think it, it turned out that way, but I don't... Yeah, they, they got maybe a little tied up, and... It, it was not his intent, nor was there any kind of frustration. I think mm -hmm. he went for him, and, and then the collision happened. That sends Ryan Miller to the line. But that is the fourth foul on Hudson Welty. Ryan Miller, not a guy you want to see on the line as a Park Hill South fan. He's a very good free throw shooter. He you, misses that one. That You did that. <laughs> <laughs> this time I'm not as upset about it. There we go, 45 seconds left. One possession game, where is it gonna go, Schaefer? You know, you, you gotta think Peyton Meek, but there are multiple guys on the floor that can't shoot the three. And that does not go ball is into the corner and then Welty fouls Ryan Miller. That's going to be it for Hudson Welty. It's going to be the double bonus. Ryan Miller will go back to the line after having missed the last time and now Welty will be subbed for and he can only hope now that those were not his final minutes as a Park Hill senior, Park Hill South senior. You've got to think that that is something that will be going through any kid's mind at this point. And they have it listed as nine fouls up there. I thought that was 10. Either way, he made the first 
And so we've got a second shot. Forty, thirty-five. The three is up, missed, and into the hands of Park Hill and another foul. And this one now slipping away from the favored Panthers and now maybe a little surprising as far as what's going on. You know, it, it really doesn't feel like real life quite yet. It feels like there's no way this could be happening, but you know, the score is 35-40 with 21 and a half left. I didn't, you know, if you were to tell me before the game that Park Hill could win this game, I, I can't say that I would be shocked by it, but I wouldn't have expected them at this point to be up by five. We're going to have a timeout was called before. Now let's see, they're going to they're going to talk this one over. Was there a timeout? Was there? I don't think there would have been a foul. He pointed over to the bench, so the Park he was, Hills bench. Well, he's pointing to Park Hills bench, but but the Par Park Hill would have never had the chance to call a timeout, right? When the ball was in play. Right. I think Garrison called for the timeout, and the refs attempted to grant it to him and made a mistake. So now they inbound, 17 seconds left. Need to get a quick three here. Someone's gonna, gonna have, have to put move this ball a little up. quicker. Meek does, three, got it! Still life, hanging on by maybe more than a thread and the only complaint on that was that maybe it took a little too long, but with seven seconds left, they are back in the game, and that one did not shock me at all that Peyton Meek could deliver. I would have to call that one stellar. <laughs> the voice of Jim Bly and the incredible vocabulary. <laughs> there's still a lot of time left on this clock. I think there's about seven seconds left. We've seen crazier things happen. Panthers still are not out of this one. No, and they're, they're very much in it. They've got to now try to go for that quick steal and then an immediate foul. Can't let time go off. That was the only thing that happened there. They got the ball in the hands of the right guy, but Henderson held up for a little bit and we ended up losing 10 or 11 seconds there. But I think they'll take that result. And now 40 to 38. 10 points on the game for Meek, none bigger than that three. Senior guard Ricky Trammell will inbound. Trying to get it to sham it. They do, and an immediate foul. And only six tenths of a second come off the clock. So that's exactly what they could have hoped for. Try to prevent him from getting it in. They do get it in the sham it. And now you've got to obviously hope for, if you're Park Hill South, a miss. This is double bonus. He's going to get two shots. As a Park Hill South fan, you just have to hope he misses at least one of those shots, making it only a three-point game, still giving the Panthers a chance to tie this one up and send it into overtime. Well, I don't know if we will see a timeout or not, so let's, let's at least plan this one out and get into the head of Coach Zeke. If they have a shot to tie it or win it, where are you going with it? Well, Peyton Meek, the senior, leads the school in all-time three-pointers. You got to think that he'll head there now. With that being said, you know, Coach Garrison's probably thinking the same thing. So then it comes into question, do you use Meek more of as a, as a decoy and get the ball into an, another shooter's hands? Colt Flyers out there. Henderson can shoot a three as well. Well, it may all be for naught because Landry Shamit hits the three. It is a four-point game, and it's going to take something close to a miracle. Not completely impossible, but at 6.4 seconds left, they are going to need a very quick three. This is where you kind of wish you had the NBA rule here with the uh, with the timeout and you get the ball at midcourt, mm -hmm. which I've never really understood. It's like a free, but 
they're going to have to go the length of the court quickly and probably get that ball in the hands of someone like me quickly. Forty-two, thirty-eight, and the expected players have stepped up. Landry Shamit has been leading the way, and Evan Hines and Peyton Meek had nice games too. All right, here's Meek over to Henderson. He's got to get it up quickly. They're only going to get one shot. Just took too long. They get the three, but that'll. End the game as Park Hill with the upset over the rival Park Hill South. And you feel for any of these kids that lose because they're all close, they're all good friends, they all battled hard. And for the second straight year, it ends in heartbreak for the Panthers. You know, you ordered it perfectly yesterday when you said nobody deserves to lose, but somebody's got to lose. And in this case, it unfortunately is the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, there are games like we saw with the Panthers yesterday where it was clear who was going to win, who was going to lose. In this one, a game of runs, a game that was close most of the way, and it was the Panthers that end up one point short, and I'm not really sure what Coach Rick Zeke would even tell his team after the contest in this one because this is a team that certainly had the talent to go a long ways. You know, it's tough. You've got you've got three seniors on the team that have played varsity basketball and started since their sophomore year. And this is an end to a very long chapter of their life. High school basketball is going to be a big part of a lot of these guys' lives. Now, a lot of them are going to go on to play college basketball, but there's nothing like the high school basketball experience, being in high school, playing in front of the people you've grown up with. Well, there are positives as far as Park Hill South goes. 21 wins, most in school history. We know what Coach Zeke has done in turning this program around. It hasn't ended, did not end the way that he wanted it to. He and his Panthers gracefully accepting their plaque for finishing in second, but the attention, and deservedly so right now, goes to the team in red, David Garrison, and his Trojans winning. And I think that, you know, you said it best. You said it best earlier today. Coach Zeke said it last night. It is not easy playing a team three times in one season. Now, when, when you're just so much better than the other team and you blew them out the first two times, that might be one thing. But when you beat them by six and I think three points the, the first two times, you know, it, 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 it's this was going to be a tough task for them, and it was. Right. You know, that, that happened last year against St. Joe Central. It happened earlier today with North Kansas City and Staley. It's just it's one of those things that's tough to do, and, and you really feel – the Park Hill South team, especially those seniors that have put in so much work. A lot of people don't realize how much work nowadays these high school basketball, mm -hmm. high school athletes put in, put into their sports. And this is, a lot of these guys, this is their life. This is what they love to do. And it, it, it's tough to see it come to an end like this. And, and it was going to come to an end for one of these teams. And I, I think you're right. And Schaefer, you could speak to that as, as a high school athlete who puts in so much work and has put in a lot of work now, rehabbing and the amount of effort you put in, not to mention everything you've got to do in school and keeping the academics up. And so, you know, when you when you see something like that, you know, it's um it's not easy. And whether it would be, you know, on on, on your guys' side for a, a Peyton Meek or an Evan Hines or, or or a Hudson Welty or on the other side, they're seniors, that is not easy when you see your senior career, uh, your high school career come to an end, because a lot of these kids will will never have the chance, you know, to play basketball competitively again. And 
Let's let's jump in right now with uh, with the Thanks. Thank you. with the coach of Park Hill. Yeah, we'll just have you hold that coach and and David Garrison joins us and you know I I have uh, we'll we'll get you in and out of here quick because I know you're you, you've got <laughs> other duties. Uh, first off, congratulations and easier for me to sit up here than my partner there um, who who has his rooting interests. Um, I'm a neutral guy at stake. I just like to see a good basketball game. But we saw that with your team yesterday. We saw that with your team today at a much higher level, too. What are the emotions right now as, as your kids are celebrating? Let's be honest, what is an upset? Uh, yeah, we're on cloud nine right now. You know, the third time. this is the third time that we played them this year. And our first game, you know, they really controlled the, the, the ending score. We went on a run in the fourth quarter, but they really they had us down the whole time. The second game, you know, we came back and we felt we competed really well. Uh, and we felt good about the effort that we gave, but we knew there were just some things that we needed to do different to win the game. You know, and today, you know, we went through the at halftime and we were down four. You know, you could see some frustrations on our kids' faces, but our leaders just stepped up and said it's a four-point game, guys, and we have to stay with it. Starting the third quarter, you know, we told them we needed just to make three shots. If we made three shots, we we're going to be in the game, and we made those three shots really quick. And we stepped up and had some confidence, and we had some good kids step up and make some plays, and, and I, I cannot be happier for this group of kids. It, it seemed to me, and, and they, I don't know if it surprised you or not, I know you, you guys know each other so well, the kids, the coaches, uh, there's, there's a great respect, but they were playing man instead of zone early on, and, and that seemed to be working okay for you guys going up against them. Once they switched to that 2-3 zone, you weren't able to score much. Your three-point shooters were not doing what they often do, and then maybe that's the three shots you're talking about. But it, but finally, the, the floodgates kind of opened, and Ryan Miller got going a little bit, and Trammell had some big shots, and that, that just seemed to change the whole game. It did. You know, when they go in the two-three, I mean, they're you're going to have opportunities to hit from outside. You know, and the thing that it did to us is it just changed the flow of our offense. You know, the ball started to sticking. We weren't moving very well. Uh, and then when that happens, it, it's tough to step up and hit shots, you know, and in the fourth quarter, you know, it, it's contagious. You know, when we talk about it in the practice, when one person makes a play, the other person's going to step up and do it. You know, I think we saw that happen. Last thing, there's so many good athletes on this floor, and I was just saying it again without ties to either team, that it, you hate to see the careers end for the seniors, especially those that won't get to play at another level because they'll, they'll never have, you know, these moments back. Your kids, fortunately for you, live for another day and, and hopefully many more. But when you look at the amount of athletes on this floor and then you see what Landry Shaman is able to do, you're maybe spoiled because you get to be around him every single day. But yeah. to be able to see all of the things he does, there isn't a good adjective out there that doesn't describe him. I mean, how does he affect this game? <laughs> you know, you really can't put into words everything that he does. You know, we went through a stretch for a week in the season when we were at the Baser Linwood tournament where he had a muscle strain and so he was out three games so we didn't have him that week and you know I don't think we really appreciated everything he did until we, we went through those three games and we struggled and went one and two in the tournament you know because he's just such a leader on the floor he's, he's so smart he's a great defender he can handle the basketball you know he can come off and score and he can post up and so you know probably the best compliment I could ever get a player is that you make your teammates better and when, it, when Andrew's on the floor, he makes his teammates better. Well, you said it, and, and I've heard uh, uh, Ned Yost say this in baseball, that he wishes he could clone 25 Alex Gordons. And when you told <laughs> me today you wish that you could you could clone more of the Landry Shamets, and that's not a knock on the other guys because you had some other kids that no, really stepped up and did a good job. But it's, it's really more just the ultimate compliment uh, to a special player. Yes, it is. You know, and you know, all of our kids, you know, we bought in, and, and when they started the season off, they had five goals. They wanted to give 100% effort. They wanted to have great team chemistry. They wanted to stay positive, be productive, and have no issues. You know, and, and they have done a great job of that this season. Well, congratulations. I know you got other people you need to talk to. Good luck next week heading over to Independence. I know that the kids represented the school very well. Both sets of kids represented the district really well. And, and, and this right here is what high school basketball yeah. and high school athletics you know, is all about. I can't say enough about Park Hill South. Those kids, you know, a lot of those kids have been varsity basketball players for three years. You know, watching them go out there and compete, and with Coach Zeke and his staff, I mean, there's a lot of respect. Uh, they do a great job. Yeah, it's evident. Congratulations, Coach, and good luck Thank next you. week. Thanks. All right, that is David Garrison, and we will appreciate him taking that visit and step aside here on 810 WHB-TV as Park Hill upsets Park Hill South in the district championship. 
Hey Run and Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169. City Run and Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrunatruck.com. Ulcerous fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service. We're here for you. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings Team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810WHB-TV at pvskc.com. pvskc.com. Yeah, what a tough care set, so. It was really good. Mm -hmm. well, welcome back. Let's put a wrap on this one here. Joel Goldberg and Schaefer Schutz. And, you know, as we've been saying, you're, you are a student athlete at Park Hill South, and those are your teammates down there, too. You, you'd be out there on the floor with them if not for rehabbing the shoulder injury. So I know this one hurts. I'll have you take that and that hat off for a minute and just put on your broadcasting hat, which is easier for me to do. And what was your overall assessment of this game? We knew it was going to be close, but what ended up being the difference? You know, we, we've talked multiple times um, this afternoon about how tough it is to beat really any team three times in a row. And it's, it's also tough because after you beat them, it's like those two games didn't mean anything at this point in time. We see Park Hill, their record, I think now 14 and 13. Park Hill South, 21 and, and 6. And it, it's tough. It's, it really is. I was just in the locker room kind of trying to console a few of those guys that just played their last high school basketball game. And, it, and a lot of those guys are my, my friends, my teammates you mentioned earlier. And it's tough to see them like that. Yeah. So that's what I was going to ask you. We'll put the other hat on, the, the one of teammate and friend and classmate. What what was going on down there? It's, it's never easy. I don't care what level you're at mm -hmm. to have played your last game, uh, especially when it is potentially – well, it is, you know, your last high school game. But um, obviously the mood was somber. I don't need to ask you that. But what was being said down there? You, you know, I walked in just, just at the end of, of Coach Zeke talking to them as a team. And, you know, he told them how proud he was of them, how proud of the season um, he was. And it really, it really was tough. There's a lot of guys in there that are, when they broke out, a lot of guys kind of going to their own little corners trying to be kind of by themselves a little bit. A lot of tears were being shed. Um, it's tough. It is. Well, you know, we had a chance to, and you were just asking me as, as we were coming on, what did Coach Garrison said, say, and, and it was nice to hear the, the respect. And I know you'll, you'll get some 
stuff going back and forth between teams. You said you heard a little something down there. We don't need to get into that, and I don't think it involved any names of, of significance. But, um, but the one thing he pointed out was just the amount of respect that both coaches have for each other, these kids have for each other, the programs have for each other, and, you know, really a celebration of, of both of these schools out there. And, and like we've said, only one team could win, one could lose. But that's really, you know, one of the things that he was talking about. He was, as he said, on cloud nine. And I don't know if we would have heard Coach Zeke necessarily coming up here saying he was on cloud nine because his team was the one that was supposed to win. Mm -hmm. Coach Garrison, this is, I mean, it was a big win. If whoever was going to win this, it was a must win, obviously, for both teams. But um, in the coach of, uh, in the case of Coach Garrison, you could, you could see the excitement and you could hear it from him. But he was really quick to point out just, the special relationship that that both of these sides have and I, I know that's not something they're thinking about right now in the Park Hill South locker room but but there is a lot of respect you know and I think I think he really hit the nail on the head with that statement these players you know as, as much as they go at it we we see them working so hard on the floor some some rough fouls and everything they really do at the end of the day they respect each other and a lot of these guys have grown up together you know so they've grown up playing against each other they've grown up and they've had to deal with these these type of these type of games multiple times. It's in the first time that some of these guys have been on the losing end of these games. I thought it was interesting too, he pointed out, he said that the frustration at halftime, and they didn't have the shots falling, and he told them, we just need to make three shots. We'll make three shots, we'll get back into this game. And that it was the seniors that really kept them going. We saw, once those shots started to fall, they were struggling against that zone. And, and you know, Coach Garrison pointed out that, that you will get some looks against that 2-3 zone. You will get some threes. They weren't falling for them. Once they started to fall, we saw the momentum. Really in the fourth quarter, though, we saw the momentum change, the energy level here change. And, and, and sports are always a game. It's a game of momentum, right? And then we saw as Ryan Miller and um, and Trammell hit those threes and then, and then Shan, uh, Shamit doing everything that he always does, you just – you could feel that momentum go from one end to the other. You know, and, and as a as a spectator, as a fan of, of Park Hill South, that's that's something that you're really not wanting to see. It's something that happened last year in the district championship against St. Joe Central. Late in the game, kind of grabbed the momentum, kept it th throughout the rest of the way, and, and pulled out the victory, which is what Park Hill did today. All right, well, Park Hill lives for another day. They'll play Wednesday in Independence. We might have that one here on 810 WHB TV. We do know that on Thursday and Friday we'll be out at the pep rallies and uh, covering the Big 12 tournament and all the excitement over at the Power and Light. So I'll be there for that. Looking forward to that. And I just have to say that it's been a lot of fun doing this with you. You, you know a lot more about these kids and, and their stories than I do. So I leaned on you more than you leaned on me, and people may or may not believe that one, but it's 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 exciting to watch. And I know you got a lot more things coming up from a sports standpoint, but I think that, and this is just my my on-air advice that this is something you uh, one day, if you want to do, I think you can do, and I think you're off to a nice start. No, I appreciate that, thing. especially that coming from a guy like you. I really that means a lot. Well, it was fun, and and I think we, you know, well, we didn't. We had fun today, too, but, mm -hmm. but it, this was a little more business yeah. today. This, this yep. was a big game here. Not a whole lot of moments to, to tell other kind of stories and, and, and do all that type of stuff. And so, um, you know, we had a blowout yesterday. We had a double overtime game yesterday. We had this championship here, and, and um, it was fun doing it. So wish you nothing but the best with the, with the football career as you get that going back again with the shoulder and, and, and all the athletics at Park Hill South. And then... You know, just don't take my job anytime soon if, if, if that's okay. Until I'm old. I'm already old. But. All right, Schaefer, good job. Enjoyed it. Thank you. That is Schaefer Schutz. I'm Joel Goldberg alongside of Jim Bly. It was an upset here down to the wire as Park Hill upsets the top seed in the district, Park Hill South, for the district championship. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching on 810 WHB-TV here from Staley High School. Just like your hometown team, City Run and Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169, City Run and Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrunatruck.com.
All service. Fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service. We're here for you. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings Team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810 WHB-TV at PVSKC.com. PVSKC.com. 